further reflection, we have concluded that this resolution is best for the Vikings and for Adrian. These are the owners of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, we want to be clear, we have a strong stance regarding the protection and welfare of children, and we want to be sure we get this right. At the same time, we want to express our support uh, for Adrian and acknowledge his seven plus years of outstanding commitment to this organization and this community. So we ask this question after it's all said and done. Skip Bayless, just before 2 a.m. in the morning, they made this announcement. Do you believe that this is the right move? I do, obviously, and Stephen A. and Carrie, I said on this show on Monday and Tuesday, the National Football League cannot allow Adrian Peterson to play football for the Vikings on Sunday in New Orleans. And I believe, this is just Stephen A., my educated guess, that the commissioner, Roger Goodell, with heavy input, I'm guessing, from his new female board of advisors, let me say influenced Ziggy Wilf, the, obviously the owner of the Vikings, to back off his decision of Monday to let Adrian Peterson play after sitting out the one game last Sunday, let him play again this Sunday. Now, obviously, the Vikings got blown out in that home game last Sunday, 30-7 to by the New England Patriots. The Vikings are in the business of entertaining fans by winning football games. But we all know that the Vikings in the National Football League are bottom line in the business of selling advertising. And I thought the first significant shot got fired on Monday, or maybe it was, let's say I'm losing days, Tuesday, by Radisson Hotels, who are based in the Minneapolis area. And they said, we are going to suspend our, our limited sponsorship. We know that their banner hangs behind the podium during Vikings news conferences. And then I thought yesterday, the hammer fell with the Anheuser-Busch statement that Anheuser-Busch, as one of the primary sponsors of the National Football League, is quote unquote disappointed and concerned, and that they are not yet satisfied with the actions so far taken by the National Football League. And I thought it was very significant. The NFL responded to that statement briefly, but they did respond. They did not ignore it. They did not try to discount it. They said, you're right, basically I'm paraphrasing, but they said, we will do whatever it takes going forward. We will do more going forward. I think we're showing that statement, statement right yeah. now. Yep. And Stephen A., I'm going to remind you, Anheuser-Busch is halfway through a six-year, $1.2 billion deal with the National Football League. That hit home, which was followed up by concerns voiced by McDonald's and Visa and Campbell's Soup. And you mentioned Nike pulled its Adrian Peterson merchandise, I think, just in the Minneapolis area. area. But, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe nationally they're also leaning toward pulling their Adrian Peterson material. So the bottom line is that the bottom line of the NFL has been more threatened over the last two or three days than it ever has in the history of this league, which prompted Roger Goodell to move Adrian Peterson, I'm thinking he, it was his influence, his suggestion, onto something I'd never heard of exactly. called the exempt list. I don't know what it is. I, maybe you know, I, Stephen no, A. No, I tweeted that. Did I go, you? what exactly oh, what, what is, is this it? list? I don't yeah. know. I've never heard of it, but maybe they sort of had to create a place sure. Options. To, to place Adrian Peterson. Yeah. And he will get paid the bulk of his $11.8 million salary. I don't have an issue with that. But I did have an issue with his playing football until his case is resolved. And obviously... The news of a second incident in the past involving Adrian Peterson with what, what I would characterize as child abuse did not help this situation and, and again, pushed the Vikings and the NFL to say, enough. What took you so long? Well, first of all, let's, let's, let's get with the exempt list first. Uh, if my understanding of it is correct, the exempt list comes into play simply because the Vikings didn't want to flat out cut or waive Adrian Peterson because then he would be free to be picked up by somebody else. They have to pay him, but at the same time, he's prohibited from being involved uh, in any uh, and all team activities. Uh, yet, and still, he's their property in the event 
that this case gets resolved and he can ultimately come back to them. Uh, Baltimore obviously didn't care that much about Ray Rice because Ray Rice is not the same as Adrian Peterson. He's not considered the best running back in football, and he's somebody that obviously they deemed they could afford to lose, whereas Adrian Peterson, the Vikings' mentality is that while we understand that we can't play him and he can't be involved in the team right now, once this issue is resolved, we certainly don't want the possibility of him ending up playing for somebody else in a different uniform. That's point number one. Point number two, to get directly to the question, I, ter I certainly support uh, the Vikings and the NFL in this move. I think it was inevitable. I think it's something that had to happen in light of the sponsors coming into play and really, really pulling their advertising dollars. Uh, their mentality is, is, is very, very simple. We're not going to tolerate this. I find it ironic that it's Anheuser-Busch, uh, a beer company, a beer distributor, somebody involved in the world of alcohol, because when you look at uh, a preponderance of things that have transpired over the years, certainly, in at least in some cases, alcohol had something to do with that. Go back to the days of Leonard Little or, or Dante Stallworth and others. Individuals were killed. Alcohol was involved. And we never heard much uh, from the beer companies at that particular moment in time. So I find it a bit ironic to see them sticking their nose into this, but that does not make them wrong for doing so. We understand that at this particular juncture, at this particular moment in time, everybody should be incredibly concerned because when you're talking about the well-being and the welfare of a child, um, that is as defenseless as it gets in our society. As I've said on many, many occasions, skip over the public airwaves, whether it be television or radio or beyond, you can sit there and find serial killers that are incarcerated for the rest of their natural lives, and they would have a problem with somebody who harms kids. Kid, people who, harms kid, who harm kids in any way are considered just the dregs of our society. So Anheuser-Busch speaking up along with McDonald's and others intimating that they may end up doing the same, I definitely think it's the NFL seeing the handwriting on the wall, and it's a reminder that indeed we can all promote and provoke change. If you have the power to affect somebody's bottom line, that's how you make things happen in our society, in this culture. That's what Anheuser-Busch intimated with its actions. That's what other sponsors have intimated with uh, threats of their actions. That is what the NFL is responding to. Nobody deserves cookies and milk here, as if they're just doing the right things out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because they recognize bottom line is going to be affected. That's what's going on here. We understand it. We accept it. We embrace it. Because in the end, it's all about the well-being of a child in this particular instance. Okay. I don't want to dwell on this point, but you raised it. You're fully aware of the many times I've, I've expressed on this show my issues with alcohol and how it damaged my childhood home. Sure. Yes, sir. I, I'm going to separate my personal feelings toward alcohol from the Anheuser-Busch statement of yesterday because I do respect that company as a company. And part of that statement was that Anheuser-Busch is not yet satisfied with the league's handling of behaviors that so clearly go against our company's culture and moral code. Well, again, I have issues with alcohol, but I, I do not have issues with Anheuser-Busch's company and moral code because because I respect it. So, Stephen A., I think we have to separate those those two issues here, that, that this is a respected company that, that sells its product to men and women, and yet we have other sponsors, McDonald's, Campbell's Soup, Visa, they're, they're all coming along too. So let's, you know, it's, it's interesting because this is cutting across a lot of lines here. We have women, and I saw a stat, that 85% of, um, that, that women, women influence 85% yeah. of purchasing decisions related to home. disposable income. Yeah. Okay, that's a powerful stat to me. Sure. But remember, you're also bringing in here with the Adrian Peterson issue, mothers and fathers with kids. So you, um, you got that going on. So it's, it's not just domestic abuse here, we're also dealing with child abuse. So now we've cut across all kinds of lines that would affect advertisers. What, 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 well, Skip, I, I, I respectfully disagree. Um, I'm not trying to denigrate Anheuser-Busch per se. I'm not trying to question whether or not they're a legitimate, respectable company. I in no way mean to imply that. I'm simply talking about the, the, the fact that they're a, a beer company. 
okay? And they're speaking about this. We've got drunk driving issues all over the place. Sure. We have NFL players That's, those are other that, issues. Have, yep. that have taken the life of individuals and alcohol was involved. I'm simply pointing out that although we are all sensitive to anything that involves the welfare of a child, yep. I find it a bit ironic that right. a beer company would speak up about it. Well, and I'm standing by that statement, and I'm not flinching. Okay, well, Arian Foster tweeted about that, just he for the did. record. He and did. It, it was profound. I thought it was an interesting tweet. He, he made yeah. a good point. Yeah. He said uh, alcohol is, is dis, just as dangerous, mm -hmm. some could so say. It's yeah. domestic abuse. It yeah. can be just as damaging. Yep. Um, let's, in, let's include something here. The NFL Players Association was informed of the Vikings' decision to place uh, AP on this uh, commission-exempt list. They discussed his options regarding potential, potentially challenging uh, the team's decision. Pearson chose not to. He is not going to fight this. Okay. He has, he has though, let me just add this, he mm -hmm. has uh, spoken out on Instagram and Twitter by posting Bible verses each time a decision has been made. That's his way of responding without responding. Are you okay with that? Um, I think he believes he's being vilified and he wants to respond appropriately. If I were to read into the messages, it was it's to say, I'm having a hard time understanding what's happening, but I know that I can get through it. I'm built for this. So he is now watching and very well aware of what people are thinking of him. And he's being very cautious as to how he responds. Well, yeah, go ahead. I, I, think, I, I think the one thing about it, I think that we need to entertain the possibility that Adrian Peterson in his own mind's eye might be conflicted here from this perspective. There is no question that what we saw in terms of the pictures was abusive. That's why the word the words child abuse come into play. I see slash marks all over a kid's body on his legs, his arm, his back, whatever the case may be. That's my definition of child abuse. Clearly, a lot of people shared that sentiment that I have because otherwise he wouldn't have been indicted. Okay, so we understand that part. But you also have to understand that Adrian Peterson may very well be sitting at home right now saying, damn, I messed up. Uh -huh. because of how I elected to discipline my child. So it's one thing to be called to the carpet for that. It's another thing to be paraded all over the airwaves and be labeled a child abuser and be indicted on these charges when half, when half the nation probably agrees with him that he had a right to parent his child, he might have just crossed the line. So that's how he's thinking. I think, it's, I think it, was, it looks like abuse in terms of this particular instance. So to skip... So does you, Carrie. Yeah. So does somebody. So does a grand jury, evidently, that indicted him. But there's a lot of. I'm gonna say this again. I'm on the radio yesterday on my show, Mad Dog Sports Radio, Sirius XM. Half the people in, up in there, and half of them were women, were calling up saying he was a bit excessive, he was wrong. But to be indicted for trying to discipline your child, they, they had a problem with that. So this nation right now. It's a debate. There's no debating Ray Rice. But in the eyes of this nation, there are a lot of people that are debating it right now, which is why I've sat up here over the last couple of days literally telling you, I don't know what to say. Because half the nation are saying, who the hell is anybody else to tell me how to parent my child? It's a tough, it's, it's, it's just a tough thing right now. But don't those, those people who call in agree that when you see those slash marks that that was too far? Yes, they all agree okay. that it was too far, every one of them. But what they're saying is, Skip, there were times as parents that some would say they went too far. Mm. And then you let them know they went too far, and then they don't do it again. But they weren't indicted. Yep. That's the issue that everybody's having. They, nobody's disputing that Adrian Peterson went too far. Nobody's disputing that. But what they're saying is, if you went too far because you were trying to discipline your child then you get called to the carpet for it and be done with it as opposed to being indicted sure. and in danger of not only using, losing your career yep. but your livelihood because of it. I look at it as a four-year-old kid. So th there's no reason that should have ever happened. Yep. But you have a lot of parents out there that are saying he made the mistake and that should be that. I don't know what to think. All I'm doing is telling you this is what I'm getting from a whole bunch of parents out there. White, black, okay. Hispanic, don't matter. So, bringing it back here to Carrie, sure. yesterday you were ambivalent about whether he